Hello everyone and welcome to the Throwdown the Mountain presented by Discraft. Terry Miller along with Simon Lazat. Simon, we're here for a PDGA A tier opening round. And here's a word from the PDGA. Love getting outside and challenging yourself to become better? How about spending time with family and friends? We're just marveling at the pure joy of flight. Then you've come to the right place at the right time. Join the PDGA. Of course, thanks to the PDGA and Dwayne Reeder. What are we looking at for hole one, Simon? Yeah, also, of course, welcome from my side. I was lucky enough to finally this year make the trip down to Florida. And uh, we are in Brooksville, which is about an hour north of Tampa. And yeah, throw down the mountain course, almost an historic place in disc golf, as I've learned. <laughs> and uh, we have a great first run card here with myself. This hole plays probably almost 400 plus feet. We're throwing uphill, basket is tucked on the right. And uh, not too much in the way here. It's a low line. We have Johnny McRae, who uh, most likely will always choose a back end on this hole. And this is one of these holes where starting with a par doesn't really feel bad because it's kind of a bonus birdie. They have pushed this one up and to the right, so if you're a frequent watcher, as Kelvin Heimberg puts it right up the middle, this one is a little bit longer than normal. We've seen a few different versions of this throughout the years, but this one up and to the right, and Chris Dickerson is leaking to the left side. I mean, not too much danger over there. It's just can make for a tougher up and down. Yeah, if you don't put this within 30 feet, then probably you're laying up anyway because the basket is right at the edge of this hill, and anything could roll easy 60 feet down the hill. And then you're looking at bogey and Johnny right here left this one a lot shorter than he probably wanted to. Just because the basket is kind of in this death putt zone. So uh, yeah, all Chris is looking for here is getting as close as possible. Yeah, that one gets a little bit squirrely on him, but it should sit within 20 feet of the pin. And Calvin, he has one of those uh, in-between putts here. There's plenty of danger. <laughs> Was he scared? Yeah, I don't know. It's, I mean, the first putt of a tournament is always, no matter what tournament, it always means something. And if it's just outside the circle here, just as Johnny's lining up this 35-footer-ish, um, which is for par, so he really wants this one. Couldn't quite connect, and this hole is uh, just right in the middle of all the holes at eighth diff most difficult, averaging over par. And uh, I was super stoked <laughs> getting this birdie on hole one because I never practiced the sidearm. I've played two practice rounds, and I thought I couldn't reach the sidearm, so I was practicing the backhand, which is really hard to get it even inside the circle. So uh, yeah, change of game plan, and it worked out last second uh, switch up and proves to be fruitful for you. You take the lone birdie here on the card and everyone else is just trying to clean up for par by Heimberg. We saw McCray miss short, so he's looking at a bogey. Yeah, this Chris really showed what this course is all about and it's scrambling. With being off the fairway, you are in deep, deep trouble almost on every hole. So the scramble rate on this course is very, very important. Off to hole two, we have one of a few par fours. This course is par 64. So we have two par fives, a couple par fours out there. And this is a tunnel shot downhill, followed by a nice open fairway, followed by another tunnel shot back into the woods, which has actually two gaps. You can go this drone flight gap on the right with a like a low line hyzer approach. But probably the more common upshot and easier is going for a Anheuser approach with also a nice gap. Ooh. Yeah, that there's is a, a, there's <laughs> a gap there, but. <laughs> that's a, a great example of a really, really bad tee shot. Um, I mean, this gap isn't the easiest to hit, but that tree is not really that in the way. Yeah. Calvin, absolutely smash that one right where you want it. 
and pretty similar for Chris Dickerson. That looks like a pretty good shot, but it look, maybe it hit uh, left at the end. I think it actually caught something. He hits this initial gap, just like Johnny does, but then actually there's a low-hanging branch up there. So it's tough to stay clean here, you guys are showing. Yeah, yeah, we're also dealing with a little bit of wind, um, which is kind of swirling in this canyon. And uh, if I can somehow save my four from where I was, that would make me extremely happy. Yeah, and Chris must have hit something late as well, because he hit the original gap, and here he is working just like you are, just to get somewhere near the basket to hopefully get up and down. It's a beautiful looking turnover, and it'll give you a look, hopefully, although there's a lot of protecting trees, and Johnny McRae has a similar look. Uh, and real quick, I have to give a huge shout out, Jomez, thanks. You mentioned the dr possible drone flights. Well, nobody flies drones like Jomez, and thank you for lending me the footage as Heimberg's trying to make this look really easy. Yeah, this upshot, unless you have the perfect drive like Calvin showed us, uh, is kind of like a throw and hope. You kind of turn one over in there and hope you miss the trees and give yourself a look for birdie. But Calvin was so close, he was like almost jump putting. <laughs> and uh, here's a scramble part. <laughs> Save <laughs> into what? the far right. <laughs> I remember this putt. I was, when I released it, I was like, oh, missed it right. And it just barely snuck in that right side. right side. <laughs> Sometimes you even surprise yourself, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, scrambling has always felt like one of my strengths because I find myself off the fairway a lot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and this course is a great tester for that. Well, we see McCray. You can take up to a full two meters here. And he's going to do exactly that because that is a barbed wire fence. It's, it's kind of surrounds the property, so bringing himself in almost a full seven feet. And McCray with an easy birdie here. Yeah, this hole also plays over par, 0.2 over par, and it's the sixth most difficult hole. And uh, Johnny and Calvin both made that three look pretty easy. Hole three, sponsored by Sun King Disc. This is a beautiful par four. What are they trying to do? Yeah, this hole has kind of the tempting go for it shot over the trees. Um, what kind of stops you from doing that is the very tight woods on the left you can see here and the road on the right. It's kind of unpredictable with the wind to throw over the trees. So we're all, I think everyone in the field is going to lay up. The layup is uh, for right-handed backhand throws, kind of a low line, mid-range overstable. You kind of want to crash it into the other side of that hill, which Calvin almost did perfectly and he got extremely unlucky there by hitting the one branch. But he's still in a spot where he can attack from. And McCray has the line, but just a little too much mustard on that because yeah. he carried all the way to the back side of the hill. You don't see that too often. Yeah, Johnny got a bit unlucky there as well because normally you don't just punch through everything. You kind of like trickle down to that path. And uh, I went a little wider just to avoid that branch because I saw Calvin and Johnny just kind of like throw straight at it. And uh, I'm right in, I'm almost in the ideal spot. It's funny you say that the layup zone is exactly, or the layup approach is what everyone's doing. Nobody thinks about going over those trees except for you. Some, oh, really? Some, somebody did it last October, uh, and they got burned. It may have been Macbeth or Heimberg, I'm sure one of you guys yeah. can remember, but it penalized them greatly. No one, no one else thinks about going any other route except for what you guys just did here. <laughs> Okay, maybe I'm not the <laughs> best person to describe every hole. <laughs> That's a good point. But uh, what's tricky about these upshots is uh, the stance, because you're really trying to find your footing. And what I noticed throwing this upshot is how important footing is in getting distance. Like footwork is at least 50% of your power. And once you lose your feet, it's so hard to adjust your upper body to that. And the rare McRae forehand, which is tough even for me to follow. And you're a little shorter than you probably thought you were. 
Yeah, I mean, in practice, I was playing this hole and leaving it short almost every time on the upshot. But um, I was always within the circle, giving myself a better look. And so I was a bit surprised here and kind of this basket also being on that little hill as Johnny gives it a great run. But that run's risky because that disc will every time, if you miss, slide at least 25, almost 30 feet back. And that's a great putt. Yeah, Chris is one of one of the most underrated, if he's even underrated, I don't know if he's more underrated now, <laughs> but he is extremely solid, just as Calvin. Calvin winning the Las Vegas Challenge earlier this year. Chris winning the Disco Poker Finals late last year. And uh, Johnny being, of course, a Florida local superhero you can almost say yeah, yeah he's he's a legend for sure and i, I don't want to just say in florida where he has resided uh, for most of his career he's clearly just one of the greatest of all time so uh, pretty jam-packed star-studded card we've got here here's hole number four what are they doing yeah, this hole is not, to anyone's surprise, one of the hardest holes on the course. Third most difficult, averaging 0.71 over par, and this is a as bonus birdie as it gets. The very difficult drive, you have to smash it on a low line, you have to hit the initial gap, which is not very wide, and then slide up this hill in the back, which gives you a... If you get inside the circle, you've thrown the perfect drive, which Kelvin <laughs> totally has. Uh, he threw the best drive I've ever seen on that hole. Yeah, I've seen quite a few throws here myself, and this is definitely about as good as it gets. You're really kind of playing that skip. I mean, you want to throw it into the hillside with maybe just a little bit of a hyzer finish to it, so it hopefully skips up. Yeah, this is exactly what you're doing. You're playing for the skip. You, you're forced to have it so low, so you're kind of automatically playing for the skip. We're, we're throwing high-speed drivers to maximize the skip potential. I'm throwing a Glow PD2 here and trying to slide it up as close as possible. And then you're left with a 30-footer straight uphill, hoping to make it or airball it, basically. <laughs> yeah, you don't want the roll away. Here's Dickerson with... Wow, and he's got to be happy that that just sat down. Rarely yeah. does he miss, but like you said, you want it to sit. Yeah, it was a good run. Well, I, I guess there's that hopeful air ball you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not really the best confidence <laughs> boost, but um, it's definitely okay to get a bar in this hole. Oh, there it is. What a great putt. Uphill. He's always comfortable with a straddle. I saw him move from kind of a forward stance to a straddle there. Clearly that paid off. Yep. Oh, that's dirty. That one should have stuck for him. Yeah, we, we all know these baskets. It can happen, so... At least it did sit down for him. As the, you guys are still looking to uh, card a, a one down on the card, which is pretty solid from what you had said. Charlie Widboom, the sponsor here for Hole 4. Thanks for all the support. I'll just throw it on the mountain. We'll take a quick walk down the hill. Look at Hole 5. It's got to be one of the shorter ones out here, isn't it? Yeah, Hole 5. You like keeping the camera on. <laughs> You're usually uh, up for something entertaining. What are we seeing on five? All right, here we have the first hole that plays under par. It is one of the easiest holes, actually the second most easiest hole, um, playing just barely under par though. Um, the tricky thing about this hole is kind of that one tree on the right here, which is the one tree to miss. As long as you miss that tree, you're gonna have a putt. And then, of course, you're trying to avoid the sawgrass, it'll, it'll slice your skin right open. <laughs> and then there's one guardian tree right next to the basket. And the whole basket is kind of sloped left to right. So, yeah, you got to play that hyzer and hope you don't get the roll away. 
And Johnny went just a bit long there, but he's definitely inside the circle, and that's all you can ask for. Oh, and that looks so good, and everyone was kind of on pins and needles. We weren't sure that it was kicking toward that OB fence area that you can see on the right side, and it's actually going to be safe. I'll spoil that one for you. Yeah, Chris was not happy with that shot. He left it pretty short, but he got a good good skip there forward, but he's probably just inside 30 feet, maybe. Yours look good, and... Yeah, I hit the tree right next to the basket, so I was going to probably hit the pin or very close to it. But I uh, hit the tree instead and rolled probably 25 down the hill. <laughs> okay. And, Ke yeah, Calvin, I mean, he is... He's on fire this season, and also he was last season at the end of it. And he's really finding his groove. He throws really far, and he's a great putter. So I'm looking forward to watching him more. Yeah, how are people going to beat him when he throws that far and then he putts that well? Kind of, kind of like Chris Dickerson, great yeah, putter. I, I didn't really see that putt in person because <laughs> I was on the other side of the hill. But uh, that was a great putt. <laughs> Did you get away with one there? Yeah, I kind of slopped that one in. <laughs> top right is I top right is always a good spot, but that was <laughs> that was like top top right right. And McCray wants to complete the star frame from just past the basket. Nice. No problems for Johnny there. Wow, two great putts, one slop putt, and Johnny just a routine. <laughs> New pin location for six, thanks to AJ and family. What are we looking at? We're looking at the 11th most difficult hole, which plays 0.04 over par, which kind of surprised me. I always thought a simple hyzer would uh, play under par, but even this hole, they put on these little hay bales there just to avoid the skips, which was kind of the only way to get to this <laughs> pin. Now we're basically throwing a blind hyzer pretty far downhill and hoping to skip over these hay bales. As, wow, Johnny, I didn't know how he got there when we walked up there, but he went long and wide, which uh, left him inside the circle putt, but he's on the side of that hill with all those trees and brushes. Yeah, almost an identical spot there for Heimberg. I'm surprised we don't see a little bit more crashing into the earlier tree uh, that one's low and also has a pretty similar result. Yeah, it's really nice to see what the discs do once they land here because we could never tell from the tee pad. So you want to leave them even shorter. I'll remember that for today. This is probably about 35 feet, maybe? Yeah, I'll give him 40. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. He needed about 41 feet of power then. <laughs> if you don't know what sawgrass is, it's basically every time you touch it, you're, it feels like a little saw is just rubbing against your skin. <laughs> Ooh. Wow, and an outstretch. Not only do you have one leg in the sawgrass, but then you were uh, uneven. You had another leg up on that hay bale. And I think that was probably more difficult than even you let on. Yeah, I mean, that was another. Uh, I slopped one in the left side there this time. And that was a very, very surprising miss for Calvin. Calvin has a great putt. It's like a hybrid spin push putt kind of thing. And um, he's, it feels like he's always online. So all he's really got to do is give it, a, give it a chance, which he didn't do there. And McCray was outstretched to his left. And that was also pretty surprising to see that McCray miss a putt from that distance. He's usually so deadly. So when it's all said and done, your uneven slot putt, as you call it, ends up being the only birdie on this card. Kind of surprising. Yeah. Yeah, after I uh, got an early lead on hole one and then kind of uh, couldn't hold it together for the next two holes, I'm back on track. And here we have hole seven, which is another downhill tee shot, which is a blind, huge hyzer. You can kind of decide how aggressive you want to go. Um, the wind plays a pretty big role here, and you basically want to go as far left as you can, 
almost more left than you think off the tee. And then the approach is into this cool looking kind of up that little hill tucked uh, green here. So we're all gonna throw overstable high speed drivers, basically high and hard left. And then it's basically just hoping you land in the fairway. Yeah, and with the amount of power you guys throw with, I'm just watching it come out of your hand, watching it hyzer, and then it's gonna disappear into the, uh, what would be the landing zone. There's not too much to hit off of the tee, so to speak. The only mistake you can make is to possibly yank it into that left tree, but all of you guys should stay plenty wide of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's also, it's hard to, hard to say because the wind changes every now and then. It's kind of swirly. We're in this, this course is also called the Grand Canyon course because it used to be a limestone quarry. Quarry. So, uh, yeah, the elevation here is no joke. And Chris went a little too tight on his drive and ended up in the sawgrass. <laughs> but um, besides a few scratches, that will leave him a birdie. And off on the left side at the moment uh, on our screen was Johnny McRae. He was kind of blind to me. But he throws a beautiful turnover and puts himself right up on the dance floor. He's within 20 feet also looking at a birdie and looks like you're just on the edge that's yeah i had a little tricky stance there i had to kind of like wrap my body around the sawgrass to get like a sidearm upshot and i was really happy with that the great thing about this uh pin position is that you basically can throw it as hard at it as you want you can have, kind of always give it a run because of the backstop yeah throwing what? into that pocket as long as you hit the gap yeah just like that even though he came in a little bit heavy uh, you know, he's got no problem. Yeah, the longest putt you'll get here is like a 25 foot or like Kelvin has here. And um, there's no wind really because we're so protected by the surroundings. So these should all be pretty routine cleanups. Star frame on this hole is uh, rather impressive though, since it played over par as well. It's the 10th most difficult hole on the easier side, barely, but the star frame on this hole. Yeah, and shout out to all the spotters and volunteers, everyone that's been out there for the last couple of weekends uh, making this possible. If we didn't have spotters, I know when we were talking to the Jomez boys, they said that this was uh, one of the toughest ones for them to come out and play without spotters, so I can understand that. And a star frame, like you said, very, very impressive. And the train keeps on rolling, hole number eight. Hole number eight, we have the hole that plays exactly even par, which I haven't seen many times. So, um, yeah, not too much excitement going on here. We have a little slopey slope from left to right. Distance is right around 350 feet, so anyone can birdie this hole and anyone... Yeah, not much, not too much trouble here. You kind of just have to hit the initial gap, which is almost like 40 feet wide. So it's all basically about distance control and then not getting an unlucky skip or roll. I left that one a bit wide and I'm going to be in a tricky spot there to find a way through the pine trees to putt. And I love the play here by McCray. He keeps it low, kind of lets it skip to the pin without too much angle on it. Simon, you just haven't played here long enough to realize there are plenty of dangerous rollaways that can happen here. I've seen a lot of high numbers taken. In fact, I think even Kelvin in the past has taken a few high numbers because this hole can really come up and bite you if you find yourself rolling away or even finding the OB way down at the bottom of the hill on the right side. Kelvin's got a little bit of work to do, but his like kind of mid-range putter game is just so consistent you know when he's kind of in that weird layup zone he really has nothing to worry about but you seem to manage get up and over what you needed to do there yep scrambling is one of the <laughs> is one of the main factors that separates good from great Dickerson with a really solid putt now, <clears throat> excuse me, even when you go long here, you have some of these trees to contend with. You definitely want to come up a few feet short of this hole if you can, 
because as Johnny's experiencing, he might be 20 feet away, but still be quite obstructed. Yeah, we, I remember Johnny was uh, saying that that branch was too close to the basket, that last little pine tree right behind the basket. Yep. It's like literally almost touching the basket. It's. I totally agree with Johnny there. It's just, if you put your disc within five feet of the basket and you kind of have to like reach around a branch, I don't know, I think they could put it in a better spot. <laughs> I'm clearly stoked with my par. <laughs> Very, very impressive. Thanks to Sun King and DGA. We're moving on to hole nine. Here we have the sixth most difficult hole, averaging 0.2 over par. This is a very, very cool hole. Um, again, we're playing over the main canyon, kind of, where the wind kind of swirls around, which makes this hole very difficult. Also here, the distance, at playing at almost 450 feet, makes this hole rather hard to reach, especially on this Anheuser line. And you can see a couple different approaches to this hole. Everyone's probably throwing a straight, maybe slightly understable distance driver, I would probably say. And that one, we, we all couldn't really tell where that ended up because he hit the main guardian tree, which is, it's like deceiving how far away it is. Because every shot I look at where I think it, it's around, it still hits like one of the branches. He kind of punched through and finished on the left side, which I could barely catch in my camera angle. Yeah. But I, I know the rest of the group had a really hard time finding it as we moved up there. And I'm surprised by your roller here. Well, that's partially why I threw it. Because <laughs> you were surprised too? No, I just like to surprise people and <laughs> make people like see like a different approach to a hole. Okay, okay. And Calvin played this one the right way, I thought. He just didn't quite turn it over enough, but you want to keep this real wide, and he just had to commit a bit more to that turnover line. So McCray was pinched up on that left side, but even with that roll away, that puts him in a range where he can definitely save the par here. Yeah. And your angle doesn't look too good either. You no, I had to, to stretch do. way around that little tree again and try to somehow get a power out of my wrist. Uh, and I, I got it far enough up there to get a good chance that's to save my par. Yeah, you're pretty much right next to McCray. And Calvin making use of his long legs. If you heard on a Smashbox interview a few weeks ago, Calvin telling us he's just over seven feet tall. So for everyone that's wondering, is that true? No. <laughs> I was like confused for a sec. <laughs> no, he gets asked all the time as to how tall he is and uh, people think he's over seven feet. And he kind of towers over you guys in some photos. You're definitely wondering. So solid par save by you. And, and for a moment, I honestly thought you had putted from McCray's disc. I'm like, what did you just do? And then I realized McCray was just that close to your lie. Yeah, we were a foot apart. And as we're closing out here on the front nine, I also, of course, want to thank Dana Smith, AJ, and family, as we said, along with Florida Cracker Kitchen. And McCray doesn't seem to be quite on track like we're used to from him. So, Simon, uh, as these guys put out, I want to say thanks for joining us here on the front nine. Looking forward to heading into the back. Yeah, and you can see we were all tied until uh, Johnny... Unfortunately, missed his uh, par putt there, but uh, it's still a battle. We are <laughs> all within one stroke, and uh, all the long and challenging holes kind of start now. All right, let's get to it. We'll see you on the back. <laughs> 